Section 13 of Aspects of Love, an Anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Sonnets by William Shakespeare. 141. In faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note but tis my heart that loves what they despise who in despite of you is pleased to dote nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted nor tender feeling to base touches prone nor taste nor smell desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone but my five wits nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man thy proud heart slave and vassal wretch to be only my plague thus far i count my gain that she that makes me sin awards me pain a hundred and forty two love is my sin and thy dear virtue hate hate of my sin grounded on sinful loving oh but with mine compare thou thine own state and thou shalt find it merits not reproving or if it do not from those lips of thine that have profaned their scarlet ornaments and sealed false bonds of love as oft as mine be it lawful i love thee as thou lovest those whom thine eyes woo as mine importune thee root pity in thy heart that when it grows thy pity may deserve to pitied be if thou dost seek to have what thou dost hide by self-example mayst thou be denied a hundred and forty-three lo as a careful housewife runs to catch one of her feathered creatures broke away sets down her babe and makes all swift dispatch in pursuit of the thing she would have stay whilst her neglected child holds her in chase cries to catch her whose busy care is bent to follow that which flies before her face not prizing her poor infant's discontent so runst thou after that which flies from thee whilst i thy babe chase thee afar behind but if thou catch thy hope turn back to me and play the mother's part kiss me be kind so will i pray that thou mayst have thy will if thou turn back and my loud crying still a hundred and forty four two loves i have of comfort and despair which like two spirits do suggest me still the better angel is a man right fair the worser spirit a woman coloured ill to win me soon to hell my female evil tempteth my better angel from my side and would corrupt my saint to be a devil wooing his purity with her foul pride and whether that my angel be turned fiend suspect i may yet not directly tell but being both from me both to each friend i guess one angel in another's hell yet this shall i ne'er know but live in doubt till my bad angel fire my good one out a hundred and forty five those lips that love's own hand did make breathed forth the sound that said i hate to me her that languished for her sake but when she saw my woeful state straight in her heart did mercy come chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentle doom and taught it thus anew to greet i hate she altered with an end that followed it as gentle day doth follow night who like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away i hate 
from hate away she threw and saved my life saying not you a hundred and forty six poor soul the centre of my sinful earth my sinful earth these rebel powers array why dost thou pine within and suffer dearth painting my outward walls so costly gay why so large cost having so short a lease dost thou upon thy fading mansion spend shall worms inheritors of this excess eat up thy charge is this thy body's end then soul live thou upon thy servant's loss and let that pine to aggravate thy store by terms divine in selling hours of dross within be fed without be rich no more so shalt thou feed on death that feeds on men and death once dead there's no more dying then a hundred and forty seven my love is as a fever longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease feeding on that which doth preserve the ill the uncertain sickly appetite to please my reason the physician to my love angry that his prescriptions are not kept hath left me and i desperate now approve desire is death which physic did accept past cure i am now reason is past care and frantic mad with ever more unrest my thoughts and my discourse as madmen's are at random from the truth vainly expressed for i have sworn thee fair and thought thee bright who art as black as hell as dark as night a hundred and forty eight o oh, me what eyes hath love put in my head which hath no correspondence with true sight or if they have where is my judgment fled that censures falsely what they see aright if that be fair where on my false eyes dote what means the world to say it is not so if it be not then love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all men's no how can it oh how can love's eye be true that is so vexed with watching and with tears no marvel then though i mistake my view the sun itself sees not till heaven clears o oh, cunning love with tears thou keep'st me blind lest eyes well seeing thy foul faults should find a hundred and forty-nine canst thou o cruel say i love thee not when i against myself with thee partake do i not think on thee when i forgot am of myself all tyrant for thy sake who hateth thee that i do call my friend on whom frownst thou that i do fawn upon nay if thou lowest on me do i not spend revenge upon myself with present moan what merit do i in my self-respect that is so proud thy service to despise when all my best doth worship thy defect commanded by the motion of thine eyes but love hate on for now i know thy mind those that can see thou lovest and i am blind a hundred and fifty oh from what power hast thou this powerful might with insufficiency my heart to sway to make me give the lie to my true sight and swear that brightness doth not grace the day whence hast thou this becoming of things ill that in the very refuse of thy deeds there is such strength and warrantise of skill that in my mind thy worst all best exceeds who taught thee how to make me love thee more the more i hear and see just cause of hate although i love what others do abhor with others thou shouldst not abhor my state if thy unworthiness raised love in me more worthy i 
to be beloved of thee a hundred and fifty one love is too young to know what conscience is yet who knows not conscience is born of love then gentle cheater urge not my amiss lest guilty of my faults thy sweet self prove for thou betraying me i do betray my nobler part to my gross body's treason my soul doth tell my body that he may triumph in love flesh stays no farther reason but rising at thy name doth point out thee as his triumphant prize proud of this pride he is contented thy poor drudge to be to stand in thy affairs fall by thy side no want of conscience hold it that i call her love for whose dear love i rise and fall a hundred and fifty two in loving thee thou knowest i am forsworn but thou art twice forsworn to me love swearing in act thy bed vow broke and new faith torn in vowing new hate after new love bearing but why of two oaths breach do i accuse thee when i break twenty i am perjured most for all my vows are oaths but to misuse thee and all my honest faith in thee is lost for i have sworn deep oaths of thy deep kindness oaths of thy love thy truth thy constancy and to enlighten thee gave eyes to blindness or made them swear against the thing they see for i have sworn thee fair more perjured i to swear against the truth so foul a lie a hundred and fifty three cupid led by his brand and fell asleep a maid of dian's disadvantage found and his love kindling fire did quickly steep in a cold valley fountain of that ground which borrowed from this holy fire of love a dateless lively heat still to endure and grew a seething bath which yet men prove against strange maladies a sovereign cure but at my mistress i love's brand new fired the boy for trial needs would touch my breast i sick with all the help of bath desired and thither hide a sad distempered guest but found no cure the bath for my help lies where cupid got new fire my mistress eyes a hundred and fifty four the little love god lying once asleep laid by his side his heart in flaming brand whilst many nymphs that vowed chaste life to keep came tripping by but in her maiden hand the fairest votary took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had warmed and so the general of hot desire was sleeping by a virgin hand disarmed this brand she quenched in a cool well by which from love's fire took heat perpetual growing a bath and healthful remedy for men diseased but i my mistress thrall came there for cure and this by that i prove love's fire heats water water cools not love End of section thirteen. End of the sonnets by William Shakespeare. Section fourteen of Aspects of Love, an anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison songs and sonnets by john donne the good morrow i wonder by my troth what thou and i did till we loved were we not weaned till then 
but sucked on country pleasures childishly or snorted we in the seven sleepers den twas so but this all pleasures fancies be if ever any beauty i did see which i desired and got twas but a dream of thee and now good morrow to our waking souls which watch not one another out of fear for love all love of other sights controls and makes one little room an everywhere let sea discoverers to new worlds have gone let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown let us possess one world each hath one and is one my face in thine eye thine in mine appears and true plain hearts do in the faces rest where can we find two better hemispheres without sharp north without declining west whatever dies was not mixed equally if our two loves be one or thou and i love so alike that none do slacken none can die song go and catch a falling star decked with child a mandrake root tell me where all past years are or who cleft the devil's foot teach me to hear mermaids singing or to keep off envy's stinging and find what wine serves to advance an honest mind if thou beest born to strange sights things invisible to see ride ten thousand days and nights till age snow-white hairs on thee thou when thou returnest wilt tell me all strange wonders that befell thee and swear nowhere lives a woman true and fair if thou find'st one let me know such a pilgrimage were sweet yet do not i would not go though at next door we might meet though she were true when you met her and last till you write your letter yet she will be false ere i come to two or three woman's constancy now thou hast loved me one whole day to-morrow when thou leavest what wilt thou say wilt thou then and to-day some new-made vow or say that now we are not just those persons which we were or that oaths made in reverential fear of love and his wrath any may forswear or as true deaths true marriages untie so lovers contracts images of those bind but till sleep death's image them unloose or your own end to justify for having purposed change and falsehood you can have no way but falsehood to be true vain lunatic against these scapes i could dispute and conquer if i would which i abstain to do for by to-morrow i may think so too the undertaking i have done one braver thing than all the worthies did and yet a braver thence doth spring which is to keep that hid it were but madness now to impart the skill of specular stone when he which can have learned the art to cut it can find none so 
if i now should utter this others because no more such step to work upon there is would love but as before but he who loveliness within hath found all outward loathes for he who colour loves and skin loves but their oldest clothes if as i have you also do virtue attired in woman see and dare love that and say so too and forget the he and she and if this love though placed so from profane men you hide which will no faith on this bestow or if they do deride then you have done a braver thing than all the worthies did and a braver thence will spring which is to keep that hid the sun rising busy old fool unruly son why dost thou thus through windows and through curtains call on us must to thy motions lovers seasons run o oh, saucy pedantic wretch go chide late schoolboys and sour prentices go tell court huntsmen that the king will ride call country ants to harvest officers love all alike no season knows nor clime nor hours days months which are the rags of time thy beams so reverend and strong why shouldst thou think i could eclipse and cloud them with a wink but that i would not lose her sight so long if her eyes have not blinded thine look and to-morrow late tell me whether both the indias of spice and mine be where thou left them all i hear with me ask for those kings whom thou sawest yesterday and thou shalt hear all here in one bed lay she is all states and all princes i nothing else is princes do but play us compared to this all honours mimic all wealth alchemy thou son art half as happy as we in that the world's contracted thus thine age asks ease and since thy duties be to warm the world that's done in warming us shine here to us and thou art everywhere this bed thy centre is these walls thy sphere the indifferent i can love both fair and brown her whom abundance melts and her whom want betrays her who loves loneliness best and her who masks and plays her whom the country formed and whom the town her who believes and her who tries her who still weeps with spongy eyes and her who is dry cork and never cries i can love her and her and you and you i can love any so she be not true will no other vice content you will it not serve your turn to do as did your mothers or have you all old vices spent and now would find out others or doth a fear that men are true torment you oh we are not be not you so let me and do you twenty know rob me but bind me not and let me go must i who came to travel through you grow your fixed subject because you are true venus heard me sigh this song and by love's sweetest part variety she swore she heard not this till now and that it should be so no more she went examined and returned ere long and said alas some two or three 
for heretics in love there be, which think to establish dangerous constancy, but I have told them, since you will be true, you shall be true to them, who are false to you. Love's Usury For every hour that thou wilt spare me now, I will allow, usurious god of love, twenty to thee, when with my brown my grey hairs equal be. Till then, love, let my body reign, and let me travel, sojourn, snatch, plot, have, forget, resume my last year's relic, think that yet we had never met. Let me think any rival's letter mine, and at next nine keep midnight's promise. Mistake by the way the maid, and tell the lady of that delay. Only let me love none, no, not the sport, from country grass to comfitures of court, or cities kelka shows, let report my mind transport. This bargain's good, if, when I am old, I be inflamed by thee. If thine own honour, or my shame, or pain, thou covet most, at that age thou shalt gain. Do thy will then, then subject and degree, and fruit of love, love, I submit to thee. Spare me till then, I'll bear it, though she be one that loves me the canonization for god's sake hold your tongue and let me love i chide my palsy or my gout my five grey hairs or ruined fortune flout with wealth your state your mind with arts improve take you a course get you a place observe his honour or his grace or the king's real or his stamped face contemplate what you will approve, so you will let me love. Alas, alas, who's injured by my love? What merchant ships have my sighs drowned? Who says my tears have overflowed his ground? When did my colds a forward spring remove? When did the heats which my veins fill add one more to the plaguey bill? Soldiers find wars, and lawyers find out still litigious men which quarrels move, though she and I do love. Call us what you will, we are made such by love. Call her one, me another fly. We are tapers too, and at our own cost die. And we in us find the eagle and the dove. The phoenix riddle hath more wit by us, we two being one are it. So to one neutral thing both sexes fit, We die and rise the same, And prove mysterious by this love. We can die by it, if not live by love, And if unfit for tombs and hearth our legend be, It will be fit for verse, And if no piece of chronicle we prove, We'll build in sonnets pretty rooms, as well a well-wrought urn becomes the greatest ashes as half-acre tombs, and by these hymns all shall approve us canonized for love. And thus invoke us, you whom reverend love made one another's hermitage, you to whom love was peace that now is rage, who did the whole world's soul contract, and drove into the glasses of your eyes, so made such mirrors and such spies, that they did all to you epitomize, countries, towns, courts, beg from you above, a pattern of your love. The Triple Fool I am two fools, I know, for loving and for saying so in whining poetry but where's that wise man that would not be as i if she would not deny then as the earth's inward narrow crooked lanes 
do purge sea waters fretful salt away i thought if i could draw my pains through rhymes vexation i should them allay griefs brought to numbers cannot be so fierce for he tames it that fetters it in verse but when i have done so some man his art and voice to show doth set and sing my pain and by delighting many frees again grief which verse did restrain to love and grief tribute of verse belongs but not of such as pleases when tis read both are increased by such songs for both their triumphs so are published and i which was two fools do so grow three who are a little wise the best fools be lovers infiniteness if yet i have not all thy love dear i shall never have it all i cannot breathe one other sigh to move nor can entreat one other tear to fall and all my treasure which should purchase thee sighs tears and oaths and letters i have spent yet no more can be due to me than at the bargain made was meant if then thy gift of love were partial that some to me some should to others fall dear i shall never have thee all or if then thou gavest me all all was but all which thou hadst then but if in thy heart since there be or shall new love created be by other men which have their stocks entire and can in tears in sighs in oaths and letters outbid me this new love may beget new fears for this love was not vowed by thee and yet it was thy gift being general the ground thy heart is mine whatever shall grow there dear i should have it all yet i would not have all yet he that hath all can have no more and since my love doth every day admit new growth thou shouldst have new rewards in store thou canst not every day give me thy heart if thou canst give it then thou never gavest it love's riddles are that though thy heart depart it stays at home and thou with losing savest it but we will have a way more liberal than changing hearts to join them so we shall be one and one another's all song sweetest love i do not go for weariness of thee nor in hope the world can show a fitter love for me but since that i must die at last tis best to use myself in jest thus by feigned deaths to die yesternight the sun went hence and yet is here to-day he hath no desire nor sense nor half so short a way then fear not me but believe that i shall make speedier journeys since i take more wings and spurs than he oh how feeble is man's power that if good fortune fall cannot add another hour nor a lost hour recall but come bad chance and we join to it our strength and we teach it art and length itself or us to advance when thou sighest thou sighest not wind but sighest my soul away when thou weepest unkindly kind my life-blood doth decay it cannot be that thou lovest me as thou sayest if in thine my life thou waste thou art the best of me let not thy divining heart forthink me any ill destiny may take thy part and may thy fears fulfil but think that we are but turned aside to sleep they who one another keep alive ne'er parted be
the legacy when i died last and dear i die as often as from thee i go though it be but an hour ago and lovers hours be full eternity i can remember yet that i something did say and something did bestow though i be dead which sent me i should be mine own executor and legacy i heard me say tell her anon that myself that is you not i did kill me and when i felt me die i bid me send my heart when i was gone but i alas could there find none when i had ripped me and searched where hearts did lie it killed me again that i who still was true in life in my last will should cousin you yet i found something like a heart but colours it and corners had it was not good it was not bad it was entire to none and few had part as good as could be made by art it seemed and therefore for our losses sad i meant to send this heart instead of mine but oh no man could hold it for twas thine a fever oh do not die for i shall hate all women so when thou art gone that thee i shall not celebrate when i remember thou wast one but yet thou canst not die i know to leave this world behind is death but when thou from this world wilt go the whole world vapours with thy breath or if when thou the world's soul goest it stay tis but thy carcass then the fairest woman but thy ghost but corrupt worms the worthiest men o wrangling schools that search what fire shall burn this world had none the wit unto this knowledge to aspire that this her fever might be it and yet she cannot waste by this nor long bear this torturing wrong for much corruption needful is to fuel such a fever long these burning fits but meet yours be whose matter in thee is soon spent thy beauty and all parts which are thee are unchangeable firmament yet twas of my mind seizing thee though it in thee cannot persever for i had rather own a bee of thee one hour than all else ever air and angels twice or thrice had i loved thee before i knew thy face or name so in a voice so in a shapeless flame angels affect us oft and worshipped be still when to where thou wert i came some lovely glorious nothing i did see but since my soul whose child love is takes limbs of flesh and else could nothing do more subtle than the parent is love must not be but take a body too and therefore what thou wert and who i bid love ask and now that it assume thy body i allow and fix itself in thy lip eye and brow whilst thus to ballast love i thought and so more steadily to have gone with wares uh, which would sink admiration i saw i had love's pinnace overfraught every thy hair for love to work upon is much too much some fitter must be sought for nor in nothing nor in things extreme and scattering bright can love inhere then as an angel face and wings of air not pure as it yet pure doth wear so thy love may be my love's sphere just such disparity as is twixt air 
and angel's purity twixt women's love and men's will ever be break of day tis true tis day what though it be o oh, wilt thou therefore rise from me or why should we rise because tis light did we lie down because twas night love which in spite of darkness brought us hither should in despite of light keep us together light hath no tongue but is all i if it could speak as well as spy this were the worst that it could say that being well i fain would stay and that i loved my heart and honour so that i would not from him that had them go must business thee from hence remove oh that's the worst disease of love the poor the foul the fair love can admit but not the busied man he which hath business and makes love doth do such wrong as when a married man doth woo the anniversary all kings and all their favourites all glory of honours beauties wits the sun itself which makes times as they pass is elder by a year now than it was when thou and i first one another saw all other things to their destruction draw only our love hath no decay this no to-morrow hath nor yesterday running it never runs from us away but truly keeps his first last everlasting day two graves must hide thine and my course if one might death were no divorce alas as well as other princes we who prince enough in one another be must leave at last in death these eyes and ears up fed with true oaths and with sweet salt tears but souls where nothing dwells but love all other thoughts being inmates then shall prove this or a love increased there above when bodies to their graves souls from their graves remove and then we shall be throughly blessed but we no more than all the rest here upon earth we are kings and none but we can be such kings nor of such subjects be who is so safe as we when none can do treason to us except one of us two true and false fears let us refrain let us love nobly and live and add again years and years unto years till we attain to right three score this is the second of our reign end of section fourteen section fifteen of aspects of love an anthology this librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Tony Addison Songs and Sonnets of John Donne A valediction of my name in the window One My name engraved herein Doth contribute my firmness to this glass Which ever since that charm hath been as hard as that which graved it was thine eye will give it price enough to mock the diamonds of either rock two tis much that glass should be as all confessing and through shine as i tis more that it shows thee to thee and clear reflects thee to thine eye but all such rules love's magic can undo here you see me and i am you three as no one point nor dash which are but accessories to this name 
the showers and tempests can outwash so shall all times find me the same you this entireness better may fulfil who have the pattern with you still four or if too hard and deep this learning be for a scratched name to teach it as a given death's head keep lovers mortality to preach or think this ragged bony name to be my ruinous anatomy five then as all my souls be emparadised in you in whom alone i understand and grow and see the rafters of my body bone being still with you the muscle sinew and bane which tile this house will come again six till my return repair and recompact my scattered body so as all the virtuous powers which are fixed in the stars are said to flow into such characters as graved be when these stars have supremacy seven so since this name was cut when love and grief their exaltation had no door gainst this name's influence shut as much more loving as more sad twill make thee and thou shouldst till i return since i die daily daily mourn eight when thy inconsiderate hand flings ope this casement with my trembling name to look on one whose wit or land new battery to thy heart may frame then think this name alive and that thou thus in it offend'st my genius nine and when thy melted maid corrupted by thy lover's gold and page his letter at thy pillow hath laid disputed it and tamed thy rage and thou beginst to thaw towards him for this may my name step in and hide his ten and if this treason go to an overt act and that thou write again in superscribing this name flow into thy fancy from the pain so in forgetting thou rememberest right and unaware to me shalt write eleven but glass and lines must be no means our firm substantial love to keep near death inflicts this lethargy and this i murmur in my sleep impute this idle talk to that i go for dying men talk often so twickenham garden blasted with sighs and surrounded with tears hither i come to seek the spring and at mine eyes and at mine ears receive such balms as else cure everything but o oh, self traitor i do bring the spider love which transubstantiates all and can convert manner to gall and that this place may thoroughly be thought true paradise i have the serpent brought twere wholesome for me that winter did benight the glory of this place and that a grey frost did forbid these trees to laugh and mock me to my face but that i may not this disgrace endure nor yet leave loving love let me some senseless piece of this place be make me a mandrake so i may groan here or a stone fountain weeping out my year hither with crystal vials lovers come and take my tears which are love's wine 
and try your mistress tears at home for all are false that taste not just like mine alas hearts do not in eyes shine nor can you more judge woman's thoughts by tears than by her shadow what she wears o oh, perverse sex when none is true but she who's therefore true because her truth kills me a valediction of the book i'll tell thee now dear love what thou shalt do to anger destiny as she doth us how i shall stay though she esloin me thus and how posterity shall know it too how thine may out endure sibyl's glory and obscure her who from pindar could allure and her through whose help lucan is not lame and her whose book they say homer did find and name study our manuscripts those myriads of letters which have passed twixt thee and me thence write our annals and in them will be to all whom love subliming fire invades rule and example found there the faith of any ground no schismatic will dare to wound that sees how love this grace to us afford to make to keep to use to be these his records this book as long lived as the elements or as the world's form this all graver tome in cipher writ or new-made idiom we for love's clergy only are instruments when this book is made thus should again the ravenous vandals and goths inundate us learning were safe in this our universe scholars might learn sciences spheres music angels verse here love's divines since all divinity is love or wonder may find all they seek whether abstract spiritual love they like their souls exhaled with what they do not see or loath so to amuse faith's infirmity they choose something which they may see and use for though minds be the heaven where love doth sit beauty a convenient type may be to figure it here more than in their books may lawyers find both by what titles mistresses are ours and how a prerogative these states devours transferred from love himself to womankind who though from heart and eyes they exact great subsidize forsake him who on them relies and for the cause honour or conscience give chimeras vain as they or their prerogative here statesmen or of them they which can read may of their occupation find the grounds love and their art alike if deadly wounds if to consider what tis one proceed in both they do excel who the present govern well whose weakness none doth or dares tell in this thy book such will their nothing see as in the bible some can find out alchemy thus vent thy thoughts abroad i'll study thee as he removes far off that great heights takes how great love is presence best trial makes but absence tries how long this love will be to take a latitude sun or stars are fitliest viewed at their brightest but to conclude of longitudes what other way have we but 
to mark when and where the dark eclipses be. Community Good we must love, and must hate ill, for ill is ill, and good good still. But there are things indifferent, which we may neither hate nor love, but one and then another prove, as we shall find our fancy bent. If then, at first, wise nature had made women either good or bad, then some we might hate, and some choose, but since she did them so create, that we may neither love nor hate, only this rests, all, all may use. If they were good, it would be seen, good is as visible as green, and to all eyes itself betrays. If they were bad, they could not last, bad doth itself and others waste, self so they deserve nor blame, nor praise. But they are ours, as fruits are ours, he that but tastes, he that devours, and he that leaves all doth as well, changed loves are but changed sorts of meat, and when he hath the kernel eat, who doth not fling away the shell? Love's growth. I scarce believe my love to be so pure as I had thought it was, because it doth endure vicissitude and season as the grass. Methinks I lied all winter when I swore my love was infinite, if spring make it more. But if this medicine love which cures all sorrow with more, not only be no quintessence, but mixed of all stuff's paining soul or sense, and of the sun his working vigour borrow, love's not so pure and abstract as they use to say, which have no mistress but their muse, but as all else being elemented too, love sometimes would contemplate, sometimes do. And yet no greater but more eminent, love by the spring is grown, as in the firmament, stars by the sun are not enlarged, but shown. Gentle love deeds, as blossoms on a bough, from love's awakened root do bud out now, if, as in water stirred, more circles be produced by one, love such additions take, those, like so many spheres, but one heaven make, for they are all concentric unto thee, and though each spring do add to love new hate, as princes do in times of action get new taxes, and remit them not in peace, no winter shall abate the spring's increase. Love's exchange. Love, any devil else but you, would for a given soul give something too. At court your fellows every day give the art of rhyming, huntsmanship, or play, for them which were their own before. Only I have nothing which gave more, but am, alas, by being lowly lower i ask no dispensation now to falsify a tear or sigh or vow i do not sue from thee to draw a known obstante on nature's law these are prerogatives they inhere in thee and thine none should forswear except that he loves minion word give me thy weakness make me blind both ways as thou and thine in eyes and mind love let me never know that this is love or that love childish is let me not know that others know that she knows my pains lest that so a tender shame make me mine own new woe if thou give nothing yet thou art just because i would not thy first motions trust small towns which stand stiff till great shot inform them by war's law 
condition not. Such in love's warfare is my case, I may not article for grace, Having put love at last to show this face. This face by which he could command, And change the idolatry of any land, This face which wheresoe'er it comes, Can call vowed men from cloisters, Dead from tombs, and melt both poles at once, and store deserts with cities, and make more mines in the earth than quarries were before. For this love is enraged with me, yet kills not. If I must example be to future rebels, if the unborn must learn by my being cut up and torn, kill and dissect me, love, for this torture against thine own end is racked carcasses, make ill anatomies confined love some man unworthy to be possessor of old or new love himself being false or weak thought his pain and shame would be lesser if on womankind he might his anger wreak and thence a law did grow one might but one man know but are other creatures so are sun moon or stars by law forbidden to smile where they list or lend away their light are birds divorced or are they chidden if they leave their mate or lie abroad a night beasts do no jointures lose though they new lovers choose but we are made worse than those who e'er rigged fair ship to lie in harbours and not to seek new lands or not to deal with all or built fair houses set trees and arbours only to lock up or else to let them fall good is not good unless a thousand it possess, but doth waste with greediness. The Dream Dear love, for nothing less than thee would I have broke this happy dream. It was a theme for reason how much too strong for fantasy. Therefore thou wakest me wisely, yet my dream thou brokest not, but continued'st it. Thou art so true, that thoughts of thee suffice to make dreams truths, and fables histories. Enter these arms, for since thou thought'st it best, not to dream all my dream, let's act the rest. As lightning, or a taper's light, thine eyes, and not thy noise waked me, yet I thought thee, for thou lovedst truth, an angel at first sight. But when I saw thou saw'st my heart, and knewest my thoughts beyond an angel's art. When thou knewest what I dreamt, when thou knewest when excessive joy would wake me, and camest then, I must confess it could not choose but be profane to think thee anything but thee. Coming and staying showed thee thee, but rising makes me doubt that now thou art not thou. That love is weak, where fears are strong as he. Tis not all spirit pure and brave, If mixed to it of fear, shame, honour have. Perchance, as torches which must ready be, Men light and put out, so thou dealst with me. Thou camest to kindle, goest to come, Then I will dream that hope again, But else would die. A Valediction of weeping let me pour forth my tears before thy face whilst i stay here for thy face coins them and thy stamp they bear and by this mintage they are something worth for thus they be pregnant of thee fruits of much grief they are emblems of more when a tear falls that thou fallst which it bore so thou and i are nothing then when on a diverse shore on a round ball, a workman that hath copies by can lay, 
and europe africa and an asia and quickly make that which was nothing all so doth each tear which thee doth wear a globe yea world by that impression grow till thy tears mixed with mine do overflow this world by waters sent from thee my heaven dissolve it so o oh, more than more draw not up seas to drown me in thy sphere weep me not dead in thine arms but forbear to teach the sea what it may do too soon let not the wind example find to do me more harm than it purposeth since thou and i sigh one another's breath who e'er sighs most is cruelest and hastes the other's death love's alchemy some that have deeper digged love's mind than i say where his centric happiness doth lie i have loved and got and told but should i love get tell till i were old i should not find that hidden mystery oh tis imposture all and as no chemic yet the elixir got but glorifies his pregnant pot if by the way to him befall some odoriferous thing or medicinal so a lover's dream a rich and long delight but get a winter seeming summer's night our ease our thrift our honour and our day shall we for this vain bubble shadow pay ends love in this that any man can be as happy as i can if he can endure the short scorn of a bridegroom's play that loving wretch that swears tis not the body's marry but the mind's which he in her angelic finds would swear as justly that he hears in that day's rude hoarse minstrelsy the spheres hope not for mind in women at their best sweetness and wit they are but mummy possessed the flea mark but this flea and mark in this how little that which thou deniest me is it sucked me first and now sucks thee and in this flea our two bloods mingled be thou knowest that this cannot be said a sin nor shame nor loss of maidenhead yet this enjoys before it woo and pampered swells with one blood made of two and this alas is more than we would do oh stay three lives in one flea spared where we almost yea more than married are this flea is you and i and this our marriage bed and marriage temple is though parents grudge and you we are met and cloistered in these living walls of jet though use make you apt to kill me let not to that self-murder added be and sacrilege three sins in killing three cruel and sudden hast thou since purple thy nail in blood of innocence wherein could this flea guilty be except in that drop which it sucked from thee yet thou triumphst and sayest that thou find'st not thyself nor me the weaker now tis true then learn how false fears be just so much honour when thou yields to me will waste as this please death took life from thee the curse whoever guesses thinks or dreams he knows who is my mistress whither by this curse his only and only his purse may some dull heart to love dispose and she yield then to all that are his foes may he be scorned by one whom all else scorns for swear to others what to her he hath sworn with fear of missing shame of getting torn madness his sorrow 
doubt his cramp may be make by but thinking who hath made him such and may he feel no touch of conscience but of fame and be anguished not that twas sin but that twas she in early and long scarceness may he rot for land which had been his if he had not himself incestuously an heir begot may he dream treason and believe that he meant to perform it and confess and die and no record tell why his sons which none of his may be inherit nothing but his infamy or may he so long parasites have fed that he would fain be theirs whom he hath bred and at the last be circumcised for bread the venom of all stepdames gamesters gall what tyrants and their subjects interwish what plants mines beasts fowl fish can contribute all ill which all prophets or poets spake and all which shall be annexed in schedules unto this by me fall on that man for if it be a she nature beforehand hath had cursed me the message send home my long strayed eyes to me which oh too long have dwelt on thee yet since there they have learned such ill such forced fashions and false passions that they be made by thee fit for no good sight keep them still send home my harmless heart again which no unworthy thought could stain but if it be taught by thine to make jestings of protestings and cross both word and oath keep it for then tis none of mine yet send me back my heart and eyes that i may know and see thy lies and may laugh and joy when thou art in anguish and dost languish for some one that will none or prove as false as thou art now a nocturnal upon st lucy's day being the shortest day tis the year's midnight and it is the days lucy's who scarce seven hours herself unmasks the sun is spent and now his flasks send forth light squibs no constant rays the world's whole sap is sunk the general balm the hydroptic earth hath drunk whither as to the bed's feet life is shrunk dead and interred yet all these seem to laugh compared with me who am their epitaph study me then you who shall lovers be at the next world that is at the next spring for i am every dead thing in whom love wrought new alchemy for his art did express a quintessence even from nothingness from dull privations and lean emptiness he ruined me and i am rebegot of absence darkness death things which are not all others from all things draw all that's good life soul form spirit whence they being have i by love's limbeck am the grave of all that's nothing up to flood have we two wept and so drowned the whole world us two oft did we grow to be two chaoses when we did show care to aught else and often absences withdrew our souls and made us carcasses but i am by her death which word wrongs her of the first nothing the elixir grown were i a man that i were one i needs must know i should prefer if i were any beast some ends some means yea plants yea stones detest and love all all some properties invest if i an ordinary nothing were as shadow a light and body must be here 
but i am none nor will my son renew you lovers for whose sake the lesser son at this time to the goat is run to fetch new lust and give it you enjoy your summer all since she enjoys her long night's festival let me prepare towards her and let me call this hour her vigil and her eve since this both the years and the days deep midnight is end of section fifteen Section 16 of Aspects of Love, an Anthology. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Songs and Sonnets by John Donne. Witchcraft by a Picture. I fix mine eye on thine, and there pity my picture burning in thine eye my picture drowned in a transparent tear when i look lower i espy hadst thou the wicked skill by pictures made and marred to kill how many ways mightst thou perform thy will but now i have drunk thy sweet salt tears and though thou pour more i'll depart my picture vanish vanish fears that i can be undamaged by that art though thou retain of me one picture more yet that will be being in thine own heart from all malice free the bait come live with me and be my love and we will some new pleasures prove of golden sands and crystal brooks with silken lines and silver hooks there will the river whispering run warmed by thy eyes more than the sun and there the enamoured fish will stay begging themselves they may betray when thou wilt swim in that live bath each fish which every channel hath will amorously to thee swim gladder to catch thee than thou him if thou to be so seen beest loath by sun or moon thou darkness both and if myself have leave to see I need not their light having thee. Let others freeze with angling rods, And cut their legs with shells and weeds, Or treacherously poor fish beset With strangling snares or windowy net. Let coarse bold hands from slimy nest the bedded fish in banks outrest, or curious traitors sleeve silk flies, bewitch poor fishes' wandering eyes. For thee thou needst no such deceit, for thou thyself art thine own bait, that fish that is not catched thereby, alas! is wiser far than i the apparition when by thy scorn o murderous i am dead and that thou thinks thee free from all solicitation from me then shall my ghost come to thy bed and thee feigned vestal in worse arms shall see then thy sick taper will begin to wink and he whose thou art then being tired before 
will if thou stir or pinch to wake him think thou call'st for more and in false sleep will from thee shrink and then poor aspen wretch neglected thou bathed in a cold quicksilver sweat wilt lie a verier ghost than i what i will say i will not tell thee now lest that preserve thee and since my love is spent i'd rather thou shouldst painfully repent than by my threatenings rest still innocent the broken heart he is stark mad who ever says that he hath been in love an hour yet not that love so soon decays but that it can ten in less space devour who will believe me if i swear that i have had the plague a year who would not laugh at me if i should say i saw a flask of powder burn a day ah oh, what a trifle is a heart if once into love's hands it come all other griefs allow a part to other griefs and ask themselves but some they come to us but us love draws he swallows us and never chores by him as by chain shot whole ranks do die he is the tyrant pike our heart the fry if twere not so what did become of my heart when i first saw thee i brought a heart into the room but from the room i carried none with me if it had gone to thee i know mine would have taught thine heart to show more pity unto me but love alas at one first blow did shiver it as glass yet nothing can to nothing fall nor any place be empty quite therefore i think my breast hath all those pieces still though they be not unite and now as broken glasses show a hundred lesser faces so my rags of heart can like wish and adore but after one such love can love no more a valediction forbidding mourning as virtuous men pass mildly away and whisper to their souls to go whilst some of their sad friends do say the breath goes now and some say no so let us melt and make no noise no tear floods nor sigh tempests move to a profanation of our joys to tell the laity our love moving of the earth brings harms and fears men reckon what it did and meant but trepidation of the spheres though greater far is innocent dull sublunary lovers love whose soul is sent cannot admit absence because it doth remove those things which elemented it but we by a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is into assured of the mind care less eyes lips and hands to miss our two souls therefore which are one though i must go endure not yet a breach but an expansion like gold to airy thinness beat if they be two they are too so, as stiff twin compasses are too. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth, if the other do. And though it in the centre sit, yet when the other far doth roam, it leans and hearkens after it, and grows erect as that comes home. Such wilt thou be to me, who must, like the other foot, obliquely run, thy firmness makes my circle just and makes me end where i begun the ecstasy where i like a pillow on a bed a pregnant bank swelled up 
to rest the violet's reclining head sat we two one another's best our hands were firmly cemented with a fast balm which thence did spring our eye-beams twisted and did thread our eyes upon one double string so to intergraft our hands as yet was all the means to make us one and pictures in our eyes to get was all our propagation as twixt two equal armies fate suspends uncertain victory our souls which to advance their state were gone out hung twixt her and me and whilst our souls negotiate there we like sepulchral statues lay all day the same our postures were and we said nothing all the day if any so by love refined that he soul's language understood and by good love were grown all mind within convenient distance stood he though he knew not which soul spake because both meant both spake the same might thence a new concoction take and part far purer than he came this ecstasy doth unperplex we said and tell us what we love we see by this it was not sex we see we saw not what did move but as all several souls contain mixture of things they know not what love these mixed souls doth mix again and makes both one each this and that a single violet transplant the strength the colour and the size all which before was poor and scant redoubles still and multiplies when love with one another so interinanimates two souls that abler soul which thence doth flow defects of loneliness controls we then who are this new soul know of what we are composed and made for the atomies of which we grow are souls whom no change can invade but oh alas so long so far our bodies why do we forbear they are ours though they are not we we are the intelligences they the sphere we owe them thanks because they thus did us to us at first convey yielded their forces sense to us nor are dross to us but allay on man heaven's influence works not so but that it first imprints the air so soul into the soul may flow though it to body first repair as our blood labours to beget spirits as like souls as it can because such fingers need to knit that subtle knot which makes us man so must pure lovers souls descend to affections and to faculties which sense may reach and apprehend else a great prince in prison lies to our bodies turn with them that so weak men on love revealed may look love's mysteries in souls do grow but yet the body is his book and if some lover such as we have heard this dialogue of one let him still mark us he shall see small change when we are to bodies gone love's deity i long to talk with some old lover's ghost who died before the god of love was born i cannot think that he 
who then loved most, sunk so low as to love one which did scorn. But since this God produced a destiny, and that vice nature custom lets it be, I must love her that loves not me. Sure, they which made him God meant not so much, nor he in his young Godhead practised it. But when an even flame two hearts did touch, his office was indulgently to fit actives to passives. Correspondency only his subject was. It cannot be love till I love her that loves me. But every modern god will now extend his vast prerogative as far as Jove, to rage, to lust, to write to, to commend. All is the purlieu of the god of love. Oh, were we wakened by this tyranny to ungod this child again, it could not be. I should love her who loves not me. Rebel and atheist too, why murmur I, as though I felt the worst that love could do? Love might make me leave loving, or might try a deeper plague to make her love me too, which, since she loves before, I am loath to see. Falsehood is worse than hate, and that must be if she whom I love should love me. Love's Diet to what a cumbersome unwieldiness and burdenous corpulence my love had grown, but that I did to make it less and keep it in proportion, give it a diet, made it feed upon that which love worst endures, discretion. Above one sigh a day I allowed him not, of which my fortune and my faults had part, and if sometimes by stealth he got a she-sigh from my mistress' heart, and thought to feast on that, I let him see, t'was neither very sound nor meant to me. If he wrung from me a tear, I brined it so with scorn or shame that him it nourished not, if he sucked hers, I let him know T'was not a tear which he had got. His drink was counterfeit, as was his meat, For eyes which roll towards all weep not, but sweat. Whatever he would dictate, I writ that, But burned my letters, when she writ to me, and that that favour made him fat, I said, if any title be conveyed by this, how ah, what doth it avail to be the fortieth name in an entail? Thus I reclaimed my buzzard love to fly at what and when and how and where I choose. Now negligent of sport I lie, and now, as other faultners use, I spring a mistress swear, write, sigh, and weep, and the game killed or lost, go talk and sleep. THE WILL Before I sigh my last gasp, let me breathe great love some legacies. Here I bequeath mine eyes to Argus, if mine eyes can see, if they be blind, then love, I give them thee. My tongue to fame, to ambassadors mine ears, To women, or the sea, my tears. Thou, love, hast taught me heretofore, By making me serve her who had twenty more, That I should give to none but such as had too much before. My constancy, I to the planets give my truth to them who at the court do live, mine ingenuity and openness to Jesuits, to buffoons my pensiveness, my silence to any who abroad hath been, my money to a capuchin, 
thou love taught'st me by appointing me to love there where no love received can be only to give to such as have an incapacity my faith i give to roman catholics all my good works unto the schismatics of amsterdam my best civility and courtship to an university my modesty i give to soldiers bear my patience let gamesters share thou love taught'st me by making me love her that holds my love disparity only to give to those that count my gift indignity i give my reputation to those which were my friends my industry to foes to schoolmen i bequeath my doubtfulness my sickness to physicians or excess to nature all that i in rhyme have writ and to my company my wit thou love by making me adore her who begot this love in me before taught'st me to make as though i gave when i did but restore to him for whom the passing bell next tolls i give my physic books my written rolls of moral counsels i to bedlam give my brazen medals unto them which live in want of bread to them which pass among all foreigners mine english tongue thou love by making me love one who thinks her friendship a fit portion for younger lovers dost my gifts thus disproportion therefore i'll give no more but i'll undo the world by dying because love dies too then all your beauties will be no more worth than gold in mines when none doth draw it forth and all your graces no more you shall have than a sundial in a grave thou love taught'st me by making me love her who doth neglect both me and thee to invent and practise this one way to annihilate all three the funeral whoever comes to shroud me do not harm nor question much that subtle wreath of hair which crowns my arm the mystery the sign you must not touch for tis my outward soul viceroy to that which then to heaven being gone will leave this to control and keep these limbs her provinces from dissolution for if the sinewy thread my brain lets fall through every part can tie those parts and make me one of all these hairs which upward grew and strength and art have from a better brain can better do it except she meant that i by this should know my pain as prisoners then are manacled when they are condemned to die whate'er she meant by it bury it with me for since i am love's martyr it might breed idolatry if into other hands these relics came as twas humility to afford to it all that a soul can do so tis some bravery that since you would save none of me i bury some of you the blossom little thinkst thou poor flower whom i have watched six or seven days and seen thy birth and seen what every hour gave to thy growth thee to this height to raise and now dost laugh and triumph on this bough little thinkst thou that it will freeze anon and that i shall to-morrow find thee fallen or not at all little thinkst thou poor heart that labourest yet to nestle thee and thinkst by hovering here to get apart in a forbidden or forbidding tree and hopest her stiffness by long siege to bow little thinkst thou that thou to-morrow ere that sun doth wake must with this sun and me 
a journey take but thou which loves to be subtle to plague thyself wilt say alas if you must go what's that to me here lies my business and here i will stay you go to friends whose love and means present various content to your eyes ears and tongue and every part if then your body go what need your heart well then stay here but know when thou hast stayed and done thy most a naked thinking heart that makes no show is to a woman but a kind of ghost how shall thee know my heart or having none know thee or one practice may make her know some other part but take my word she doth not know a heart meet me at london then a twenty days hence and thou shalt see me fresher and more fat by being with men than if i had stayed still with her and thee for god's sake if you can be you so too i would give you there to another friend whom we shall find as glad to have my body as my mind the primrose being at montgomery castle upon the hill on which it is situate upon this primrose hill where if heaven would distil a shower of rain each several drop might go to his own primrose and grow manna so and where their form and their infinity make a terrestrial galaxy as the small stars do in the sky i walk to find a true love and i see that tis not a mere woman that is she but must or more or less than woman be yet know i not which flower i wish a six or four for should my true love less than woman be she were scarce anything and then should she be more than woman she would get above all thought of sex and think to move my heart to study her and not to love both these were monsters since thou must reside falsehood in woman i could more abide she were by art than nature falsified live primrose then and thrive with thy true number five and women whom this flower doth represent with this mysterious number be content ten is the farthest number if half ten belong unto each woman then each woman may take half us men or if this will not serve their turn since all numbers are odd or even and they fall first into this five women may take us all the relic when my grave is broke up again some second guess to entertain for graves have learnt that woman head to be to more than one a bed and he that digs it spies a bracelet of bright hair about the bone will he not let us alone and think that there a loving couple lies who thought that this device might be some way to make their souls at the last busy day meet at this grave and make a little stay if this fall in a time or land where misdevotion doth command then he that digs us up will bring us to the bishop and the king to make us relics then thou shalt be a mary magdalene and i a something else thereby all women shall adore us and some men and since at such time miracles are sought i would have that age by this paper taught what miracles we harmless lovers wrought first we loved well and faithfully yet knew not what we loved nor why 
difference of sex no more we knew than our guardian angels do coming and going we perchance might kiss but not between those meals our hands ne'er touched the seals which nature injured by late law sets free these miracles we did but now alas all measure and all language i would pass should i tell what a miracle she was End of section 16